Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a splash screen for an Excel worksheet. We're going to look at ways that we can manage the splash screen to do what we want to do with it. So I'm just going to open up Microsoft Excel now and open up my document that we're going to be working with. And this is the splash screen. It's going to appear over the top of the workbook anytime that we open the workbook. We have an option for not displaying it again. So if you don't want to display it again, you can click here. You can then go and display the worksheet help, or you can go to the worksheet itself. So you can just click and do that. And so that's the basic worksheet splash screen that we're going to be creating. So I have here a duplicate of that particular workbook. So the data is in sheet one and I'm going to use sheet two as my help screen. So I'm actually just going to move it to the beginning of the workbook. I'm going to double click on the sheet name and just call it help. If you're following along, you'll want to use the same words as I am because we're going to be selecting these later on. Now, in the future, I'm going to want to have a help box in here. So I'm going to insert and I'm just going to insert a text box. So let's go and do that. And into here is going to go the help text. Now we're not going to create that. Now you can go ahead and do that later on. What we're going to do is the mechanics of actually running this splash screen that appears. And for this, we're going to need the developer tab. If you don't see the developer tab, go to file and then go down to options. And you're going to click on customize ribbon and make sure here on the right hand side that you have developer selected. That will show the developer tab on the ribbon. We're going to click on it and we're going to open the Visual Basic Editor. We're concerned this time to attach everything to the workbook that we're working in. Right now, the file is just an XLSX file, but later on, we're going to save it as an XLSM file because it will be containing macros. But we need to create our user form. And for this, we're going to choose insert and then user form. You can size your form if you wish to. Now, I'm just going to grab my properties and things which have ducked across to my other monitor. You can go to view and here you can see things like your properties window and you'll also be able to click here and see your toolbox which that's disappeared as well. So we're going to add a few elements to this. One of them is a label. So I'm just going to click on the label option here and add a title. So the title we're going to add by accessing the caption properties. So you're going to click there and just type a title for your splash screen. Once you've done that, you can edit the font and font size. I'm just going to change the font size. So I'm just going to make it about 16 so that we can see it more clearly. I'm going to add another label. I'm just going to add my labels right now, the two extra ones that I need. We're going to add a text box. So that's going to contain details of the person who actually created the worksheet. And we need a checkbox. So I'm going to choose the checkbox control here. We also need a couple of buttons. So let me just line things up a little bit better. There's plenty of room here for buttons if we just move things around a little bit. And this is going to make it a bit easier because my toolbox keeps jumping. We want a command button. So we want one command button here. And then I want a second command button. So I'm just going to line this up as best I can. So these are the elements we're going to use for my splash screen. So I'm going to go ahead and add content to them. In terms of the labels, all we're doing is changing their caption property to reflect whatever text it is that we want to see on our form. In terms of the text box, that's going to need a little bit of special treatment because this is a multi-line text box and right now it's not going to take multiple lines of information. So with the text box selected in the properties panel here, I'm going to go to multi-line and I'm going to set that to true. Now the other thing we need to do is to be able to press enter to create new lines and we won't be able to do so unless we change the enter key behavior for this text box. So I'm going to set it to true. Now I'll be able to type in my data. So that allows us to provide multiple lines of data on the form. 
Now, the checkbox will also have a caption property, and this is going to describe whatever it is that we want to do if the checkbox is checked. And then our two command buttons are also going to have captions. And then before we finish up with these properties, we're going to change the user forms caption as well. So that will show then something like a title instead of the word user form. Now, all of these captions are just regular words, so you can type whatever you like. We don't need the user form properties any longer. We're going to need to add some things that are going to make this form work. So I'm just going to double click on the form. This gets me to my user form click event. Now, we don't have anything to go in there, so I'm just going to delete that. I am going to give you this code in the description below. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in, and then we're going to talk about what it does. So this is the code for this first command button. And what it's going to do is to check to see if this checkbox is checked. And if it is checked, it's going to write a file to disk. And that's the way we're going to trigger this splash screen to appear or not appear is whether or not a file exists on disk. Now, of course, if you're familiar with Microsoft Windows, you'll know that there is now a user folder. Well, this code here allows you to access the user folder without having to know who the user is. So your user is going to be different to my user. My username is Helen. That's not yours. So this create object command here and all of this creates a file called product splash screen disabled.txt and it saves it into the My Documents folder on whoever's computer it happens to be. And then the application later on is going to look for that to see whether or not you want to display the startup screen. Once that's happened, if the checkbox is checked, the file is written to disk. Otherwise, the help sheet is just displayed and the form disappears. In terms of continuing to the worksheet, we're going to do exactly the same thing. If the checkbox is checked, we're going to write a file to disk and we're going to select sheet one, which was where the worksheet data actually is, and the form is going to be unloaded. Now, this code I actually swiped from the internet, so I'm going to show you the site that I got this from. It's from bettersolutions.com, and I just lifted this code. This is code that will ensure that the form is centered over the worksheet. You can encounter some difficulties if you've got multiple screens in that the splash screen has a habit of ending up on the opposite screen to the Excel workbook. I'm relatively confident that this is going to place it in the correct position. So all of this code gets attached to the form itself. It's buried inside the user form. But we need something to actually run the form. And so what we want the form to do is to run immediately on opening the file. Well, there's a special macro name that you can use to run a macro on opening the file. So we're going to need to add a module to our current file. So we're going to choose insert and module. It's a module. It's not a class module. And then we're going to add this special code for running the macro when the file opens. And that is sub and then just auto open, A-U-T-O, shift underline open. Now, whenever Excel sees this, it knows that it has to run this macro on opening the file. So let's go and add our code here. Just going to copy and paste this. You'll get it in the description below. What it says is if we go and have a look in that My Documents folder for the file product splash screen disabled.txt, and we don't find it, then show the form. But if we find it, it means that it got written there because you said you didn't want to see the splash screen any longer, and so this won't show. It's just going to go through the auto-open. Nothing's going to be triggered, and the file is going to open, but the splash screen won't be displayed. So basically, this is everything that we need to display the splash screen. So I'm just going to close down my Visual Basic Editor, and I am going to save this file with File and then Save As. It doesn't matter where I put it. So I'm just going to leave it where it is right now, but it is going to be saved as an XLSM file. That's really, really important because it has to be saved as that to be able to be storing macros in it. So I'm just going to click Save. 
I'm going to close this and let's open the file and see how our macro is going. Well, the first time I open this file, I'm warned that macros are disabled. So I'm going to enable the content and then close it and reopen it. And here is our splash screen. So the splash screen is appearing when we open the file. Now I'm going to just click on display worksheet help to test this and it stays on that worksheet closing the file and reopening it. We're going to test to make sure that if we select to continue to the worksheet that we're going to the data sheet which is sheet one. That's working too. Let's test and see what happens when we ask not to see the file again. Don't display it on startup but yes I would like to continue to the worksheet. So it's going to the worksheet. Let's test and see what happens when we open it again. This time we should not get the splash screen and we don't. Let's have a look at the location where the splash screen text file is and here it is here. So this is the folder in which product splash screen disabled text file is. Now if I just delete that, let's go and close this worksheet and reopen it because that is the trigger that says don't show the splash screen. So if it doesn't appear in that folder, we should see the splash screen. And of course we are. So that's going to prompt me to think about something that would be nice to have on this help screen and that is the ability to recover our splash screen. So if we said no, we don't want to see it but decide now that we do, how are we going to do that? Well, again, I'm going into the developer tab and I'm going to insert a button. So I'm just going to drag out a button here and I'm going to add a macro to this. So this is a button one click macro. I'll just click new because that lets me add my code here. Again, I'm going to give you the code for this. Since we're just resetting the splash screen here, the code is just going to go and delete that file. So if product splash screen disabled text exists, the kill command is just going to delete it. On error resume next is just an error trap if the file isn't located and we were going to get an error because we did a kill command and it didn't find anything to delete. Well, on error resume next is just going to very gracefully go past that error message. So I'm just going to save my code. Let's go back to the worksheet. Let's right click here and we're going to edit the text here and this is going to be reset splash screen. I'm going to click away from the button. Now just clicking on the reset button is not going to do anything because we don't actually have our splash screen. It's not visible right now. But we could also do a button that would show the splash screen. So let's add another one. I'm going to click new here and this one's going to display the splash screen. All this needs to do is to show the user form. So it's user form one dot show. Again, I'm going to close down my code, I'm going to save my worksheet. I'm going to right click on the button while I have it selected and choose edit text so I can give it some new text. Click away and when I click it, I'm going to display the splash screen. We're keeping an eye on here as to what's happening in this folder to make sure that nothing untoward is happening. This is looking like it's working perfectly. Let's just exit the file, save it of course because we want to save our changes and let's restart it. Because the file does not exist in this folder, we should see the splash screen immediately we open the file. I'm going to ask not to display it again and let's go to the worksheet. And you can see here that this trigger file has now been written. So if we were to close and reopen this workbook, the splash screen is not going to show because the trigger file is there. Let's just do that just to double check. You want to check these every step of the way to make sure they're working as expected. And it worked as expected. The splash screen didn't show because the trigger file is there. So let's reset this option. When I click it, the trigger file disappears. And of course, at any time we can redisplay the splash screen by just clicking on that button. So this is a great way of displaying information about a file. When somebody opens a file, it's automatically going to appear when you open the file. You can send them to different worksheets and you can offer them the option of not seeing this splash screen again if they don't want to. But of course, behind the scenes, we're also given to give them the option of resetting that if they do it by mistake. 
nice little solution, fairly simple to implement, pretty much fun to implement. So I hope you enjoy using it. Don't forget that all the code is in the description below so that you can just copy and paste it. Just make sure that the form code actually is attached to the form. It doesn't go into a module. It will need to go behind that form. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.